In this section, we are going to see accumulation mode of operation of MOS capacitor. I am taking this structure of MOS capacitor which we have discussed in ideal MOS cap. In this case, I am assuming a bulk terminal is grounded and we are left with only gate terminal at which we can apply potential. So that the potential that we apply at gate will be equal to VGB which can also be written as VG because bulk is connected to ground. So if you take gate potential VG and taking 0 as a reference, we can either apply VG negative or positive. And of course, VG being 0 is already discussed in ideal MOS cap, where gate and bulk are shorted. And we had the energy band diagram discussed in that section. In this section, we are going to discuss if VG is negative, which means this segment will be discussed. So if we apply VG negative here, VG negative, then there would be negative charges coming onto the gate. How much negative charge we will discuss as we go forward as how much ever negative charge comes onto gate that much positive charge should be coming into the semiconductor through the ground terminal. Now as we get negative charges on the gate they actually attract the majority carriers which are holes which are mobile in nature in the p-substrate. How many ever holes are attracted to the surface those many holes will be supplied from the ground which means those many electrons will be taken out because externally we should be talking about electrons. So we get positive charges here which will be the excess holes that will be attracted to the surface of the silicon dioxide silicon and this negative charge at gate should be equal to the positive charge here in the semiconductor because before we applied potential difference this MOS capacitor was charge neutral which was an ideal MOS cap and when we apply potential difference as well how much ever charge comes on gate should be equal to and opposite in the semiconductor so that the total net charge should be zero so that it is still in charge neutral condition. So let me draw the charge distribution in the MOS capacitor taking this as x-axis assuming this point the metal oxide interface as the origin or reference. Now I'm going to say this is metal region this segment and this is oxide region and this is semiconductor region. Now indicating the negative charge here I'm going to put negative charge. This negative charge will be very close to the oxide because this negative charge and positive charge attract each other and they'll be coming close to the oxide on either side but they cannot go through oxide because it is a insulator. So the negative charge distribution or volume charge distribution in the metal will be like a line charge if you see in two dimension. In three dimension it will be like a surface charge because the number of states available in metal will be so high that it can accommodate just in a line or surface. Now when we come to a semiconductor let's say silicon here the positive charge accommodated will not be simply a line charge because the effective density of states as we know are approximately 10 power 19 order of range. So the distribution will be slightly spread and we call this the positive charge here and this charge is QS the charge in the semiconductor and this is QM charge in the metal and of course we know that QM plus QS should be equal to 0 because it is charge neutral still. So we can say QM is equal to minus of QS. We know QS is positive which means QM should be negative as we have seen here. And of course this difference is T ox that is the thickness of the oxide. As we know the volume charge distribution here we can find electric field. Electric field is given by integral rho v over epsilon times dx. So let's find the electric field here. As this is an impulse we get a unit step kind of but this is negative hence we get it in the negative electric field which indicates that electric field is directed in the negative x axis. And of course that is true because we have positive charge to negative charge the electric field. 
and electric field in the oxide will be constant and once we come to the edge of the oxide to semiconductor the electric field will be discontinuous because of the boundary conditions we know that epsilon of oxide and epsilon of silicon are different epsilon of oxide is approximately 3.9 and epsilon of silicon is somewhere around 11.7 so the electric field in the semiconductor would be less compared to the oxide and this particular point is discussed in detail in the depletion region of operation so in the next segment we will be talking about this in detail so for now let's take the electric field in the semiconductor at the surface of oxide semiconductor is less compared to electric field in the oxide eox and once we get to this point the electric field would drop and become zero once we know electric field we can find potential which is given by minus of integral e bar dot dl bar of course it's a vector quantity but we're going to take it in terms of scalar and integral so i'm taking x to be here for potential now if we integrate here electric field is zero so the potential is zero and as we come here this is negative but negative of negative is positive and we have this potential increasing linearly because it is a rectangle when we integrate the area under this curve keeps increasing and after this point as it is almost linear we get the area of this triangle would turn out to be into as we integrate into a parabolic shape here and after this point it will become constant so if you take the potential here we made one assumption that bulk is connected to ground which means potential at bulk is zero so i cannot take this potential distribution exactly like this because what matters is potential difference not absolute potential so here bulk potential is zero which means i have to change the axis that is x i have taken already that potential at the bulk should be zero which means this potential here is negative so that the potential difference across bulk and gate is given like this so if you take this value this is the potential drop across the oxide and this is the potential drop across the semiconductor psi s now this would be the entire potential that is applied across the across the mos capacitor now if we observe here the amount of potential that is applied at gate should be equal to this which means we got this potential distribution by taking some charge distribution here or some charge here in metal and semiconductor and this charge should be satisfying this electric field this electric field should be satisfying this potential so which means this potential when we apply there is a precise amount of charge that has to come in the metal and semiconductor so that it satisfies all the equations we cannot say how much ever amount of charge can come here there is a fixed and predefined value that comes so that it satisfies the potential that is applied now this point is the peak electric field in the semiconductor and it will be near the oxide silicon interface now let's look at what happens to energy band diagram in this situation so for reference i am taking the ideal mos cap energy band diagram which we discussed in the previous section so this is how it looks in which the mos capacitor was in equilibrium or the gate and bulk were shorted in which case the potential difference across the mos cap was zero and in ideal mos cap the ef of metal and ef of semiconductor were at the same level exactly now because we apply potential difference which is vg and negative so the bulk potential is fixed which is ground only the gate potential is changing if you apply negative potential in fact the potential is defined with respect to positive charge so in this case when we apply negative the ef on metal side would increase because negative potential and the energy band diagram is according to electron energy that's why we have always written this as electron volts so when we apply negative potential the fermi energy level or the average energy of this material metal would increase which means ef 
would go higher compared to the semiconductor. In that case, these two points are fixed because we know whatever potential we apply, there won't be current flowing through the oxide. Hence, the Fermi energy level on the metal should be constant and the Fermi energy level on the semiconductor should be constant with respect to distance. So, when EF goes up and this EF is going to be constant, then when we move this up, these two points should be tilting. So, let's draw that band diagram. Before that, when this tilts, that exactly coincides with what we have here. Of course, this is potential defined here. And here we're talking about electron energy. So obviously the slopes will be different. So this will be positive slope. In this case, it will be negative slope because this is electron energy we are talking about. So let me draw the energy band diagram. So EF should be moving up in metal. So EF will be moving up in the metal and EF in the semiconductor would be below with respect to metal. And the difference here should be Q times Vg. And at this point, we have oxide. And here, this is oxide. And as we have discussed, when this goes up, which means it has to tilt, so we will have the energy band diagram tilting. So this difference would be Q times Vox. Vox is the potential drop across the oxide. Now, as EF is constant here in the semiconductor, how should E, V, E, C, and E, I look? If you observe the charge distribution here, we have positive charges which are excess compared to the normal doping concentration. And of course, away from the surface, deep inside the semiconductor, the semiconductor is neutral. So we can draw the energy band diagram deep inside the substrate as if it was in equilibrium condition. So let me draw it here. EV will be close to EF and EI would be somewhere here and EC would be somewhere here. But as we approach close to the silicon dioxide silicon interface, the whole concentration would be increasing. If whole concentration is increasing, that can happen only if EF gets closer to EV, which means EF is constant with respect to distance across the semiconductor, then EV should bend. So as we come closer to the oxide, EV would bend. And we know that EI, EC, and EV will be parallel. So we have band bending here. In this case, EF is closer to EV, hence it is more P-type at the surface than in the bulk. We call this accumulation because it looks like majority carriers have accumulated near the oxide silicon interface because of the potential applied. Hence, we call this accumulation mode. So as we can see here, when we apply negative potential, negative charges come on metal and it attracts positive charges to come onto the other side of the oxide in the semiconductor. Hence, we get this accumulation mode. Now, we observe here, this difference would be basically the Q times Psi S that we have talked about. So Q times Vox plus Q times Psi S should be equal to Q times Vg. So gate potential should be equal to the oxide potential plus the surface potential. Surface potential is nothing but the overall potential drop across the semiconductor. So if you see here, the overall bend will tell you in electron volts, if we convert this into volts, we will know what is the potential drop across the semiconductor. Now we know the uh, tilt in the oxide energy band gap would give us Q times the potential drop across the oxide.